Welcome friends to another lecture on the teacher on demand series. This lecture is on glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and this has been requested to me by Mudassir. Now I'll give you a classical clinical situation. A 15 year old boy suffering from malaria was treated with standard medications. He was also given primaquine as a standard treatment for malaria. He suddenly became anemic, that was his condition became critical and he was passing red color urine. The doctor, the child was managed with blood transfusion. The doctor who was treating the patient advised the parents to get a glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase test done. The test was found to be negative. That means he didn't have the enzymes in his RBCs. The doctor advised the patient, uh, the parents to be careful while giving medicines to this child and insisted that their parents tell the doctors about this condition before a doctor could prescribe any medicines. Now, what has glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme got to do with all this. Let us understand the immune system. Normally when a bacteria enters into the cell, it is um, the immune cells, the neutrophils and the macrophages attack the bacteria and destroy them. How do they bring about the destruction? They produce a number of chemicals which are called free radicals or reactive oxygen species which includes H2O2, OH, nascent oxygen so superoxides, so many other such chemicals. These chemicals attack the cell membrane of the bacteria and destroy them. That's how the bacteria dies. Normally, when these chemicals are being produced, there is a lot of chance that it can destroy the normal host cell also. So the process which is damaging the bacteria can also destroy the normal cells. But our body is smart enough to have a mechanism to prevent this damage. Our body has a chemical called glutathione. Glutathione reacts with all these oxygen species and neutralizes them to water in its process becoming oxidized glutathione. The bacteria do not have glutathione so they are destroyed by the reactive oxygen species whereas our normal cells have glutathione and because of the presence of glutathione they form oxidized glutathione and protect themselves. These oxygen species do not destroy our cells but destroy the bacteria. Once glutathione is formed, this is really of no use because it cannot be used for a next reaction. This has to be once again reduced to glutathione, reduced glutathione state and then it can participate in the next reaction and keep giving protection to the cell. Conversion of oxidized glutathione to reduced glutathione is mediated by an enzyme glutathione reductase. Glutathione reductase requires a cofactor that is NADPH. Presence of this NADPH to NAD will result in the uh, this NADPH is produced by the in the pentose pathway with the help of the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Absence of the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase ensures that no NADPH is produced and because no NADPH is produced, the glutathione reductase cannot work and because glutathione reductase cannot work, oxidized glutathione cannot be converted to glutathione and the uh, cells can be susceptible, uh, will be damaged by all these oxygen species. Now, <coughs> the process the question can arise. The process which is now destroying the cells, bacteria, will also destroy the RBCs. The question is why only the RBCs and why not any other cells? As you realize, RBCs are the only cells in the body which don't have a nucleus, hence they cannot produce any enzymes. Whatever enzyme they had was at the initial time the RBC was in. The other cells have a nucleus and can produce this enzyme as and when required, so they don't get damaged. But the RBCs, because they don't have the enzyme in them, uh, do not have a nucleus in them, they cannot produce the enzyme and they die. When does hemolysis occur? Hemolysis usually occurs when there is an oxidative stress, when there is a demand, when certain medicines like aspirin, primaquine, and a whole lot of other medicines are prescribed to the patient. These tablets induce oxidative stress and can precipitate a hemolytic. When do we do the test? Whenever they plan to start any of these medicines which are known to cause such a condition, we need to get the test done. Also, if a person has suddenly become anemic after starting a medicine, the probability of him having a G6 PD deficiency becomes very high. That time also we need to test the patient. How is the test done? 
the best transplant in two steps. In the first step, he lights the RBCs so that the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, which is present inside the RBC, becomes clean. Then, we incubate this lysate with a medium containing glucose 6-phosphate and NAD. With the help of the enzyme, glucose 6-phosphate will, will be converted to 6-phosphogluconolactone and in the process, NAD will be converted to NADH. Now, NAD has a color at 340 nanometer, whereas as it keeps getting consumed, the color tends to fade. This is a very similar reaction which we also get to see when we do enzymes like AST and AOD. It is done as a kinetic test at 340 nanometers. A sharp decrease in the enzyme activity indicates that the g 6 pd enzyme is very good. Uh, if the NAD is not consumed, that indicates that there is a G6PD deficiency. We should note this test with a little bit of caution because the timing of the test is very important. If the test is done immediately after a hemolytic crisis, that is a person is given a medicine, he gets severe anemia and we immediately test him, we should realize that all those RBCs which didn't have the enzymes would have got destroyed. And those RBCs which have some little bit of enzyme the fresh RBCs, they would actually be surviving and so if you do a test immediately, we will get a false positive result, false negative result. That is, we will say that the patient is not enzyme deficient when he is actually enzyme deficient. Remember, once a patient is d 6 pd deficiency positive, he will always remain positive and we don't have to test it every time. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture. Uh, you can feel free to contact me at petgmail.com and request me for any lectures that you would like. I would also request feedbacks and comments from you about my lecture and ways that I could improve. Thank you.